محمد و آل محمد We were born as Muslims and as you know if someone is a son of a father either or mother Muslim father or mother he will be considered in accordance to Islamic jurisprudence as Muslim whether he like it or he dislike it it's a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as someone might say that because you were born or someone was born in a western country not in some poor country it's a bounty it's a favor because you are from you belongs to this country you belongs to this wealthy family for instance now you have something in your hand you possess something and that thing is called islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you that as a bounty as a favor as a sustenance as something to enjoy yet we see that some people ask us okay your parents were muslim or are muslim because of that you are muslim yes because of that islam considers me as muslim but there is big difference between islam considering me as muslim and being a proper muslim that's something else if you want to be a proper muslim you have to understand islam alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh because islam is actions the commander of the faithful ali ibn abi talib sallallahu alayhi says in one of his very important narration I will describe Islam for you. Al-Islam wa taslim If you want to be a true Muslim, you have to submit. Submit to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submit to what? To Almighty God's laws. Submit to the Prophet. Submit to, for instance, uh, we as followers of Ahlul Bayt, submit to Ahlul Bayt. Because there are too many things that we cannot understand. And I'm not saying that because we cannot understand the reason that set behind action those laws or jurisprudence uh, verdicts that uh, we as rational people as wise people as people or creations of Allah who has actually who have uh, intellect intellectual people might understand that this is wrong no probably we cannot understand the reason behind this law why we have to do the tawaf seven times probably we cannot understand the reason behind that but let's assume it was eight let's assume it was one still we cannot understand so why seven we don't know and it's not important sometimes it's not important why salat al is four rak'at we don't know uh, probably there is nothing specific in Salat al dhuhr four rak'ah of being four rak'ah prayers. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to actually test us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, ممكن شوي الايكو ينزل والمرة الأخيرة نعرف اللغة الفارسية أيضا نتكلم باللغة الفارسية صلوا على محمد وآل محمد الله سبحانه وتعالى states in the Quran فبظلم من الذين هادوا حرمنا عليهم طيبات كانت قد وحلت لهم because they actually broke our laws broke our laws that's why we forbid things about them they used to be halal nothing wrong was with those or committing doing those actions fundamentally for instance let me give you an example for you to breathe freely and to walk in the park is it forbidden to walk in the park I can remember when just the 
pandemic started, some governors from, I think, what was Western, uh, Western uh, Australia's governor, Perth governor, or premier, so-called, started to mock uh, Sydney people because a man ate kebab and he was reached by police and fined 200 bucks. There is nothing wrong with eating kebab, yes. But during the pandemic, it's something else. Going out, breaking the law, new law enforcement because of the pandemic. So nothing wrong in walking uh, in parks, isn't it? However, if someone commits crime and he gets in prison for 10 years, let's say, may God forbid, kill someone deliberately, and then he runs away from the prison, and then he walks in the park. Is that okay? No. So it depends on every individual situation, whether we can justify his action or not. Sometimes if we, as slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Commit sense, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might impose uh, some, some laws, some restrictions about, above us. And that's something else. Because we did that. We decided with our free will to go along with our desires, for instance. So, what I'm trying to say sometimes things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making halal or haram. Things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are making halal or haram for us. They don't have anything specific in them. But that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to test us through his orders. And this is important. Why I'm, I'm actually elaborating this point. And this is very important brothers and sisters. Because... Sometimes we cannot understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated this law, this hukum. We don't know. We can't understand. But if we believe in Quran and in the Prophet وسلم, we have to accept it. As easy as that. So if somebody comes to you and tells you, can you rationally prove for me the existence of Hur al -Ain? Can you? Well, I can't. This is not something rational. This is not something that you can understand using your intellect. Yes, we can understand and accept and believe in the existence of Hur al -Ain because of the Quran. And that's something else. Just so just go to the holy book of Allah, Quran, and read and recite the Quran. And if you see that these words are Almighty God's words, and if you can touch that, understand that, if you see that this fact penetrates your heart. So if you come across a verse that you cannot understand, because your intellect is limited, your aql is not vast, your aql has not got enough light. We are limited at the end of the day. To understand that, should we reject it? So to accept Islam as our religion doesn't necessarily mean that we have to understand the whole verses of Almighty God and the whole jurisprudence law of Shiism or Islam rationally. The only condition we have that these jurisprudence law shouldn't be against intellect. That's it. Khilaf al they can't. Punishing someone for not doing anything, this is khilaf al this is against intellect. I can remember once my daughter was attending a school in Sydney. It was a Muslim Shia school as well. I'm not gonna mention the name. And it is not a Zahra school. So um, 
they wanted to take her to an excursion. They wanted my signature. I didn't accept because they wanted to stay overnight. I didn't see it as appropriate to allow, for instance, a 13 years old daughter to go and stay outside. I was a little bit worried. And then I realized that they put her in detention because her father did not sign and did not accept her to go to excursion. And then they called me. They told me why you didn't sign your daughter's paper. I said, because I'm not convinced. This is the first thing. And the second thing is, it's very inappropriate. It's in Islamic and in Australians, against Australians, values and laws. To punish someone for so-called wrong deed of someone else. This is in the Quran. And this is something that we can understand, brothers and sisters. So I said, uh, well, I'm not convinced. And it's very inappropriate for you to punish my daughter for my wrongdoing, her father's as your so-called wrongdoing. And uh, she, she replied, okay, then you have to find another school. I told her, definitely I will, proudly. Because what you are bringing to me is not very logical. Sometimes we can understand that something is not logical. That's something else. Brothers and sisters, it's something else. And it's very important. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, we cannot understand why Allah legislated this law. Although we, we don't see anything wrong with that. But only we cannot understand the reason that lays down behind that. And that's okay. That's okay. As long as we can understand that 90% of the Holy Book of Allah, 90% of Almighty God's verses are not something that we cannot even understand some part of it with my using my intellect using my wisdom leave the 10 percent aside and believe in it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the third or fourth verse of surah al-imran when he talks about allegorical verses and solid and strong verses al-ayat al-muhkamat and al-ayat al-mutashabahat walladhi anzala alayka al-kitab min hu ayatun and then, and this is important, he says, Those who have problems in their hearts usually try to make problems and trouble, to make troubles using allegorical verse. Okay, are you Muslim? Okay, what do you say about lashing those who commit some sort of sins or sins like you can, have you, how you can justify that verse well I don't know I don't know but what I can understand is the whole concept of this Quran 90% of it I can understand that it is in accordance to our wisdom and intellect for the rest, 10%, I will, not going to say I blindly accept it, but because I cannot understand reasons behind those jurisprudence law, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have to reject it. If you go to a doctor and he writes prescriptions to you, okay, the first medicine is antibiotic to fight back for instance, what uh, infection you have. The second medicine is antihistamine. I can understand that. The third one, I cannot understand. Why he prescribed that for me? Should I avoid it? No. Because I'm not a doctor. I'm not a... Prof I don't have this profession. So how do you want me to avoid using actually this? This medicine... 
How you ask me? How dare you are to ask me to avoid using that? Tafadhal. Ahlan Omar Hamal Hajj. This is very inappropriate. That's what I'm trying to say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Anna deen and Allah al Islam. We have religion, and thanks God that we have religion. We belong to a religion, and thanks God that we belong to this magnificent religion. The problem is that people, when they gain some knowledge, they start to talk and start to make differences between people, differentiate between people. You believed in the Prophet and we don't. And before the Prophet comes to us and preach for her, his religion, we all used to worship idols. In this country, when the pandemic started and then they actually invented the vaccine, you can see 70, 80%, I'm not sure, more or less than that, accepted the vaccine. And they got shot with the vaccine. But you can see a small proportion of the people that they are against the vaccine. They say it's, uh, um, we don't know what it will do in the next 10 days to us, in long term, the side effects, and etc. And some of them are knowledgeable. They, they are making the point. Their point probably is logical. Or their points are logical. However, we have to do it. Because the way to get out of this pandemic, practically, to change the law of the government, is to get shot. Isn't it? And now, you can see that majalis, Hussainiyat, mosques, schools, I don't know, uh, everything, pools are open. Why? Because people are vaccinated. So what I'm trying to say that those who were infidel and non-believer and are considered kafir in accordance to Islamic law and Islamic jurisprudence came to the Prophet and say and told him before you were sent to us. We all used to worship idols. And now we can see that some of us are accepting your religion and some of us rejecting your religion. And that means you made the community get divided. But how should we answer this uh, misconception? I have to say that, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in too many verses in Quran, and probably one of the hardest verse to understand, as scholars say, is this verse, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, لَمْ يَكُنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ مُنْفَكِّينَ حَتَّى تَأْتِيَهُمُ الْبَيْنَ That non-believers and infidels and those who associate things with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and other gods with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not believe in, one, in, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were not divided until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has descended his proof. Wow. The proof should actually lift division, not impose division. Yes, the proof should lift division. This is correct. But after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends his approved, people have got willpower. It's their call. They can decide. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to decide. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to put human beings in heaven in force. Doesn't want to enforce actually hidayah and guidance upon people. And that's why he says to his prophet, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَسْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Even if you are so eager to actually guide people, all people, but you can't, because they have willpower. And I want them to decide. I want put in heaven evil people, 
they have to get tested, they have to decide, they have to prove themselves. And allow me to bring it in this phrase, if they want to sit on the same tray that Abu al Abbas sits on, they have to prove that they deserve to sit on that tray. Otherwise, they're not allowed. They're not allowed. So yes, bayyana, proof of Allah, prophets, messengers of Allah, apostle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the ability to lift division, theoretically. However, people are free to decide. And when we see, say actually they are free to decide, we mean it. If someone wants to fast, he will fast. If a father wants his kid to fast, but they don't want, they can break their fast easily. They can go to a place and drink water and eat easily. Easily they can do that. No one can force anyone to be good. People have to decide. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually sent his messengers so we can understand after we comprehend Almighty God's saying, it's up to us to go along with prophets or to stand against them. So what is my topic tonight? And I think it's more than... I took more than half an hour, or oh, sorry, 20 minutes, is if we get asked by our schoolmates, workmates, that why you are Muslim, we have to have answer to their questions. We have to have answer to our questions. And where are the answers for our questions? In this book, the Holy Book of Allah that you are reciting these days or these nights, every night. You have the answer. You only have to think about Almighty God's verses. That's it. And you have to think, really? Your parents are actually forcing you to be Muslim? Or now you are convinced? I believe we are convinced. We love this religion. But sometimes we lack the answers. And that's why we have to try to find answers for our queries or other people's queries, those who ask us, why do you believe in Islam and why do you have religion? I can remember once when I was attending college, that was my first time to see someone uh, who doesn't believe in God. He told me, Ali, do you believe in God? I told him, yes. He said, do you have religion? I told him, yes. I responded, yes. I'm Muslim. I'm Shia. He said, yeah, yeah. I really believe that it's good to have a religion. So I'm thinking, probably he was 30, 40 years old. I'm thinking, deciding to make research to find a religion to follow after 30, 40 years. So it was then when I understood that how blessed we are. How blessed we are. We have the diamond in our hands, but only we have to know the value of that diamond. Aren't we? And if we try to comprehend and understand the value of this diamond, that's it. We'll be convinced logically and rationally with our religion. So I will end up my short speech with that. And uh, if you have any question, I will be honored if I know it. Know the answer to answer your questions. Hada walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin.
أحسن الله إليكم وأسمعكم الله يحفظكم إن شاء الله Do you want me to ask you questions? If you don't have, because I have too many questions for you. Yes, Sayyidina. Well, Islam is a sophisticated religion, we can say, as modern countries are sophisticated countries compared to, uh, let's say, uh, third world countries, so-called. And that doesn't necessarily mean that Islam is wrong. Hard doesn't mean wrong. Restrictions doesn't mean wrong, don't mean wrong. Um, if someone goes to let's say an, a poor uh, country in the world that they don't have good education, they don't have good uh, uh, medical systems, uh, they don't actually respect uh, traffic laws, uh, and then migrates from that, or migrates, or someone is from those countries, migrates to modern countries such as Australia. When he enters or she enters this country, he will be faced, he will be actually see, he will see that there are too many restrictions in this country. Too many laws, traffic laws, uh, speed limit laws, school laws. When he or she enters the school, they tell him or tell her that you are not allowed uh, to, to actually discriminate against anyone or anything, or any belief, they might say that too many restrictions, we, we have more freedom in our countries. Yes, they are right. But that doesn't necessarily mean that restrictions and hardship uh, are, are wrong. Doesn't prove anything. And actually, modern countries and modern system are systems that they legislate more laws because they can understand what is right and what is wrong what benefits people and what harms people and in accordance to benefits and harm they can legislate laws so that doesn't necessarily mean that Islam is wrong so of course hardship sometimes we cannot say it's hardship but to have too many laws. Well, Islam is not that hard. Yes, in, a, com, in compared to other religions, Islam has actually more laws. Correct. But let, let, me be, let, let us be fair. Pray three times or five times a day. Fast one month a year. Go one time for Hajj in whole life. That's not very hard. To avoid lying, backbiting people, this is something that even wisdom can understand. Intellect people, uh, rational people uh, actually um, admire that. So don't uh, let Islam take the responsibilities of all laws that we all believe in. Because lying is bad, whether you are Muslim or not. Backbiting is bad. Adultery is filthy and bad. This is, these are things that we can understand, we can comprehend. And that's why we have, in accordance to our narration, that Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, salamullahi alayhi, was someone who, he did not drink, eat, drink even a drop of wine in the era of ignorance. Although it wasn't haram back then, but he saw that drinking something that can have the ability or has the ability to intoxicate you, take away wisdom and aql and intellect off you, is not something logical. 
So too many of Islamic restrictions and law are actually intellect and wisdom's law. And that's why we cannot blame Islam and say that Islam has got too many restrictions. Yes, hard life is hard. If you want to buy a house here, how many years you have to struggle and strive? I don't know, 30 years? Take the mortgage, you have to have the down payment, have a job. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? And you have to work day and night until you pay back what you borrowed from the actually bank and they wait for angel Azrael to come and confiscate your soul because you are at the end of your life you're gonna be 60 70 you're not gonna enjoy the life and then you are making something for your kids yes but you have five kids what they have to do with one house so we haven't done anything life is hard so hard doesn't mean wrong yes I sometimes say that Okay, let me ask you a question. If someone tells you that what is the difference between Quran and Bible? What is the difference between Quran and Torah? What should be your answer? Have you thought about that? Yeah? Exactly. But what is the different, or what are the different or differences between this Quran and the Bible that people uh, and Torah that they have in their hands? Or probably those books were touched in accordance to our belief because the Holy Quran, which is the last book of Allah, mentions in the Quran, it's been mentioned that, that those books. Uh, have been touched by evil people and actually it doesn't mean that the whole Bible is false rather we have to make comparison between Bible and Quran and everything Quran accepts from Bible we can accept and everything Quran rejects from Bible we as Muslim have to think about it and you know, in Bible, there are too many weird, actually, laws. And even in Torah, too many weird laws. That when you go, for instance, the condemnation of prophets in Babel and Torah is very harsh. When Torah, Torah and Bible come to, to uh, prophets, they really condemn the prophets and say, and say illogical things uh, and relate that to prophets. So, yes. So, if you read Quran and try to understand, of course, its meaning, and then you go to other books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and try to understand its meaning as well, because it's hard to understand as well. It hasn't been written in a very contemporary English. It's hard to understand. You have to be a lawyer to understand that. You have to be an expert in language to understand that. But you can come to a conclusion that some part of those books were touched, were changed by some people. Any other questions? Now, Allah Yes, inshallah, inshallah. So the question was is, 
as we are living in a Western uh, country, what should the relation between a father or a mother and kid, what should the nature of the relation be? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed upon you, upon you that uh, to worship nothing but Allah and to respect and be a helpful child to your parents. While when we come to these countries, we see that usually they put the whole responsibility upon parents' shoulder towards their kids and nothing they put upon children's shoulder towards their parents. So what should we do? Listen, I'm not sure, uh, of course you see movies, but in movies and sometimes in movies they want to change the culture. If they see that there is a kid, a child, a daughter who takes care of her parents, his parents, they admire that. So even though it's not law, but it's something, it is something nice. It is something admired. So do we follow the law? Strictly, of course not. We cannot. It's very hard. Because we don't know law. So should we say, because these countries don't admire in accordance to their laws, ch children helping their parents and being keen and nice to their parents that we have to leave that? No. Because this is something nice. Even if a legislator, if a, a member of parliament, MP, sees you helping your parents, he will admire that. Because this is something rational. And if it is something is rational, we have to do it. And the other point is the difference between having religion and not having religion can be pops up here as well because those who are Muslim they believe in accordance to Quran that they have to be keen and nice to their parents no matter what happens while in Western countries even those who are rational and admire people who are keen and nice to their parents okay even uh, when they come to Islam, they say, okay, yeah, no, this is too much. This is too much. You've got life as well. Go to your life. You want to play as well? It's your right. You don't have to take care of them. Just put them in, in I don't know, elderly care center, what do you call it here? So, age care center. Exactly. And go to your business, but this is not nice. In accordance.